Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. My name's Joel, and this is A Stable Life. I hope you all are having an absolutely fantastic day. It's so nice to see you guys. It's an absolutely beautiful Saturday morning. Interestingly enough, temperatures are sitting at 57 degrees. That's right. 57 degrees. The high for the day is actually in the mid 60s. I'm enjoying the cooler weather, but that means that all the fans that we have in the horse stable, there's absolutely no reason for them to be on right now, wasting electricity. So we're gonna turn every single fan off because the next three days, the temperature, the highest that I've seen is gonna be 73. There we go, that's better. Now all our fans are off so we can get started feeding horses. Good morning, Buster. Good morning, Rocky. How you guys doing today, huh? How we doing? You ready for some grub? Here you go. Some grain for you. Some grain for you. There you go, boys. And in other news, we made a new addition to the donkey stall. That's right, they got a fan as well, which I just turned off because of how nice it is. But uh, on the hot summer nights, that'll be nice for them to keep them cool as well. In situations where maybe the pasture that they're out in during the day is being used at night, the donkeys will have to be kept in their stalls. So the fan will help keep them cool during those summer nights when their pasture is occupied, so they can't be out in the pasture at night. And boom, just like that, everything's set and ready for us to let the horses in. It's our favorite time of the day. We have lots of favorite times of the days here. It's poncho time and William time and time to let in all the horses. Also, I just wanted to mention it is extremely windy right now. There's a lot of crazy weather going on right now. So the wind is exceptional. So if you if wind noise is actually getting through the microphone, I am very sorry about that. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at William and see how he is doing for today. William! Hey bud, you ready? Holy moly. You ready to come in, bud? Come on. Come on. Come on, William. Good boy, William. Good boy. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, good boy. Whew. There. Out of the wind. The wind feels good, but I know from filming, uh, I'm going to have to walk in the stall with him. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. Come on. There you go. I know from filming that wind isn't always your friend, but it feels good. Also, I have a rock in my shoe. There we go, that's better. All right, on to Poncho. I notice this question is asked often in the comment section, why is Poncho by himself and not with the rest of the horses at night? It's because his owner wants him by himself in this pasture at night. Come on, Poncho. There you go. Go ahead, bud. It would appear we got some donkey tracks in our diversion ditch. By the way, a lot of you got some nice suggestions for uh, ways to fix this ditch and to make it better and to improve things. And I wanted to say thank you so very much for all of your helpful tips and tricks, as well as thoughts on how to improve this ditch. I appreciate it, guys. Looks like it's working pretty good. I agree, there needs to be more rock up here to kind of help prevent any erosion from occurring any more so, but one thing's for certain, we did fix the problem of it eroding out this bank. This is going to be the next thing that we're gonna work on. Might be today, not exactly sure, but we did change the plans up quite considerably. We're no longer gonna be running it around the water trough. We're moving the water trough so that that's no longer in that place and we're gonna move it to the bottom of the hill, which actually works pretty good for the system that we're putting in for the left run as well. More to come on that. By the way, are you subscribed? If not, how else are you getting this awesome footage with, with awful wind noise coming through? I really, I really hope it's not that bad. But anyway, be subscribed so you can see more of Champ and Jack and Leia and, and me, if, if you like me. But if you don't like me, that's fine. You can subscribe for the horses. I totally understand. Let's let them in. Good morning, Champ. How are you, bud? You can go around me. You don't, you don't understand how this works? You uh, go around me. There you go. Incredible. Go ahead, Jack. Come on. Go ahead, Poe. Go ahead, Rebel. Casino. Nice, nice to see that you last again. Now, I just want to mention right off the bat, because it's so windy, the horses are going to be a little skittish, a little spookish today. Chances are high that they're not going to go into their stalls the way they should. And also, chances are high that they're going to spook. So I need to be careful when I'm around them. Be more on guard, because I could get hurt accidentally. 
They, they wouldn't intentionally hurt me, but they would hurt me if I was in the wrong place and they spooked into me and ran me over. So I just need to be on guard of that and we're gonna double check to make sure all of them went into their correct stalls. All right, middle pasture actually did pretty good. We had no issues with them coming in. All of them went to their right stalls. Let's see if the big pasture can maintain that momentum. All right, we're at the big field, wind tunnel right now. Swade's currently first. Come on, Swade. There you go, buddy. Go ahead, Swade, come on. Let's go. Like I said, they're a little skittish today. Come on, Spitfire, come on. You're going in here. There you go. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Declan. Good morning, Duke. Good morning, Tucker. Hey, Archer. Hey, Obi. Hey, Skywalker. Hey, Argento. Hey, Weather, you're not last. Argento and Weather are not last. Gavin, Samson, Samson, how did you become last, bud? What is this? Oh my goodness. Again, I have no idea if that sounded good, but they all came in right, and it looks like they all went to their stalls. I'm gonna just go double check, but things are looking good. I just needed to help Spitfire come in and Swade, because if those two are scared and not coming in, the rest of the horses will not pass them. Okay, so I just thought I had the camera on and I didn't, but I let out Buster and Rocky. Whoopsies. Anyway, I let out Rocky instead of Buster. It ended up turning out pretty well. Other than, you know, Buster for some reason has to jump on Rocky when I'm leading Rocky out. They're like little two-year-old boys. I don't understand it, but they're special. That's, that's all I can say about it. They're special. All right, we're gonna move on to taking care of the horses for the day uh, because it is, now right now it's gonna make me not look like I'm, I'm cracked, but it is cool today, very windy and mostly cloudy. Except for right now while I'm recording the clip talking about it mostly cloudy because there's a little sun. So we're gonna not be doing any of the uh, sunscreens, but we are gonna be doing a lot of fly control. So fly masks, fly sprays, things like that. I mentioned a couple of videos ago that we do some things here at our stable for fly control measures. And you've seen in the past videos that we put fly masks on the horses as well as fly sprays on the horses. Um, but we actually do a couple other things here to help with flies. We order in special bugs that are called fly predators. These predators are actually very healthy for our natural ecosystem. And what they do is we release them where we store our manure on compost piles, as well as areas that the horses like to hang out. And those fly predators, what they'll do is they eat fly larvae, which is the uh, gr early growth stages of a fly. So they don't actually eat the adult flies but they eat the fly larvae but we've noticed that it significantly helps the flies in our local area which is awesome and they these fly predators can actually fly uh, they actually look like tiny ants with wings and they they go around and they eat uh, fly larvae they don't completely eliminate flies like I mentioned flies are a good thing to keep the area clean but too many of them is a bad thing so they keep the fly population right under control which is right where we want to have it yes hello Declan you want to say hi to everybody he's banging on the door so you put the cable up that way when he bangs you don't hear anything on the outside and I'm mainly putting this part in the video for everybody that feeds horses with Declan when you take the cable and you drop it on the ground just a little tip for you if you could please hook it excuse me Declan right on this ring so you take it you unhook it and you hook it over here just like that, and then you could unhook it right there. It seems like a small thing, but when Declan pees in his stall, which he does quite frequently, then the little hook's down on the floor, and it gets pee on it, and then I get that on my hands, and I really don't like that on my hands. So, just a little tip for you, if you could do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Declan would too, because he prefers the cable so he can get his head out further. It's a win-win for everybody, guys. On top of the fly masks, we of course have our fly sprays, and lots of people use lots of different fly sprays. Some people prefer more natural processes for fly sprays to control the flies. Others prefer, prefer your basic fly spray. Others prefer like high-end concentrated fly spray. We don't provide the fly spray for the client's horses. They provide the fly spray and we just apply it every day for their horse. And when you're spraying geldings, something that you can keep in mind is the four Bs. You wanna spray the back, the body, the belly, and the boot. And I'll demonstrate that right here. You wanna spray the back, the body, the belly, and the boot. 
And then you'll have a happy gelding when it comes to flies. All right, good news, guys. All the horses that get fly sprays and fly masks are all taken care of and are all good to go. That means next up is gonna be turnout. Alrighty guys, so we just wrapped up with turning out all the horses. I did a time lapse of all the horses going out in the pastures. Let me know what you guys think of the time lapses, if you like them and them being included in the video. That way I know what you guys like and I can try to film more of what you guys are looking forward to, what you enjoy. So next up on the list, we actually have a few things. We're actually gonna be grabbing a round bale. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And we're also gonna be tedding some horse hay. So more to come, super excited, let's get to it. So here's the story on the round bale. So right now we currently are feeding square bales, which we are planning on switching back to round bales here soon. We're gonna be building a structure in the middle pasture so that the bales are no longer out in the open uh, with rain coming down, they're under roof. And then the surrounding area is under roof as well. The plan is that we wanna give them more shelter in that pasture with the ability for them to eat the round bale without the round bale getting spoiled because of rain going on top of it. But it'll also keep the area around a lot cleaner. Now, make no mistake, the horses 100% will make it dirty from them dropping manure and urine in the area because that's where the hay is. However, without the rain getting added into it, it means we're not gonna have any mud, which means we're gonna have a lot less hoof problems. I'll be able to clean it with the tractor, of course. So we're pretty excited for, for that project. That's to come later in the year. For now, I noticed that there was a round bale while we were getting some cow bales that was made for horses that, it, I don't know what happened. But it looks like they have made a hole on the side of the bale. So this bale will, will not keep for a long time. So we're gonna feed this bale right away. We have a few days of dry weather ahead. So we're gonna grab this bale and this is what we're gonna feed the horses. It'll cut down on us using square bales, which is always a good thing. We'll be able to feed that. The rest of them look absolutely great. I already checked them out just to make sure. There was one that was over here that I grabbed and put under roof back at the horse stable and it was because we were grabbing some alfalfa bales from behind it. The bale was pretty heavy and it ended up moving the skid steer and the skid steer just bopped the bale, put a nice gash in it. Didn't get any rain on it. I grabbed it that same day and put it under roof so that'll be completely fine. So we're gonna grab this guy and we're gonna feed him. why I'm using pallet forks instead of a bale spear is just because I could access the pallet forks. The bale spear was behind some stuff. Both work. I prefer to use the bale spear because they prefer to use the pallet forks. So I use the opposite attachment of what they like to use. Right now they're not using it though, so I'm using the, bale, the uh, pallet forks. gorgeous out today guys I love in this cooler weather my kind of stuff all right so let's cut it open and see how it looks inside shall we <laughs> that's looking good wow that looks absolutely fantastic and that's with a hole in it mind you it still looks really good so we're gonna feed this to the horses speaking of what do you guys think? Do you think the horses want to eat this? I think we have our answer. I don't know about you guys, but those look like some happy horses to me. All right, next up, what we're gonna be doing is getting in the 130 because it's the only tractor that's not hooked to anything. And we're gonna be hooking up to the tether. And we're also gonna have our riding companion with us, Miss Leia. So let's go Ted some hay. All right. 
right, we got her all hooked up. Just gotta turn this uh, little kickstand back here up so that that locks up. All right, and for anybody wondering, yes, this is our tether. This is a four-star tether that folds out because it's too wide to travel down the road. The purpose of this machine is to grab the hay that has been already mowed and spread it evenly across the field, breaking up any clumps, as well as turning it over a little bit, so that way it can see the sun, which is currently not here, but more importantly, the wind, which is. So it'll fluff it up and it'll spread it out so the wind can go through it, which will dry it down. It's a very important process in haymaking. Alrighty, we have made it to our field. We, this is actually just the inlet that goes in. We're gonna be following this up and around to the right. Nice section of hay field up there that we're gonna be tedding. here in the field now this was disc bind yesterday oh my goodness this is nuts this hay is actually so dry that it's i mean it's almost ready to bale right now which is kind of crazy to think about now tedding this will dry it down a lot thinking with the wind today we're not planning on bailing this for another two days. I don't think our schedules are gonna allow it. I think there's gonna be a nice, a nice good amount here. The disc bind comes through and cuts this. Now it only cuts it at the bottom. So it's able to cut it at a pretty high rate of speed. It then feeds it through some malt rollers that crimp it and get all that moisture out and spits it out the back. Now the tether's gonna grab the hay as you're gonna see and it has little fingers. It's gonna grab the hay, take it and just kind of throw it like that. I'm a very bad tetter, but that's basically what it would do. And then the wind and the sun can hit that, dry it down nice and easy. And then that makes our crop that much better for the horses when it comes time to bale. So we don't have to worry about moisture, AKA mold being created inside the bale after this guy's bailed up and uh, wrapped and then ready to be eaten in the winter, which is pretty awesome to think about. see looks like looks nice doesn't it we got it all leveled off all those divots from the horse hooves taken out of it and it's soft real nice and smooth nice and soft for the girls when they're riding nice good footing for them all right uh, we're only gonna do the upper ring today not the lower ring because we uh, I'm always chasing the clock aren't I uh, we're gonna be filling up Williams water trough and Poncho's water trough and that takes some time So we're gonna do that before afternoon feeding so that that's done some things have changed I ended up helping out a client with some things and some time got away from us, but um, I still have to feed, fill those water troughs up But Taylor is here to help me feed horses for the afternoon So she's measuring out right now and I'm gonna be working on putting in the Supplements minerals and all those other fun stuff in the buckets for the horses. So we're gonna be starting out with Samson, and Samson gets a scoop of Aquinity, and Aquinity is basically helping muscle growth and immune health, and he also gets a scoop of Flex Max, which is designed to help him with his joints. From there, we're moving on to Tucker, and Tucker gets a scoop of Remission, and this basically helps same thing. After that is going to be Revel, who gets a scoop of Flexmore. Flexmore, as you guessed it, helps with joint health. 
A lot of the horses here are older, so they need all the help they can get. After, after Rebel, we have William. And William gets a scoop of MVP. This helps him with his LSD. I know I'm throwing all these acronyms and words at you, but William has a disorder called LSD. If you want to know what that means, you can just do a quick Google search. That'll tell you what that is. After that, we have Poncho, who gets nothing, and Jack, who gets nothing. And then that takes us on over to Danny. And Danny gets a chemical called methyl sulfonyl methane, or MSM for short. Kind of looks like sugar. Both their horses are on that. Basically, it's just a vitamin. Declan gets three scoops of Calm Ultra and one scoop of pelleted hay and then a dash of U-Guard. That also helps with joint health. After Declan, we have Archer, who gets nothing. And then the last horse for this herd is Casino, who is very overweight and gets one small cup of the Safe Choice Maintenance. So that's just a little bit of a taste of what our afternoon feeding is like. We have a whole other herd that we're gonna take care of. If you guys would like to know more about what's involved in our afternoon feeding, the supplements that we use, and why we use them, let us know down in the comments below and we'll incorporate that into a future video. We're letting in the donkeys right now. Come on boys, let's go. Come on, Buster. Come on, Rocky. Let's go, boys. All right, there we go. And the donkeys are all set, looking good. They got hay and water. Everything is all set and ready to go. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be filling up the water troughs in the pasture. We have water running down into the right run. And that's gonna fill up this holding tank. From here, I bucket the water into the left run, which is where William is on the other side of the field. Alrighty guys, we just finished up with feeding, so you know what that means, we've hit the end of the video. Don't worry though, there's gonna be another video out later. Until then, I hope you guys have yourselves an absolutely fantastic week. Thank you so very much for watching. If you haven't, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Nice.